Greetings from Ulu Rover. My name is Sahajishan and I am captain of Ulu Rover, the official rover team from Uluza University. We founded this team in 2023 where we developed our first session. After that, in 2024, we got a chance to go to the finals of ARC Anatolia Rover Challenge where we secured 8th position. Now, this year we are excited to announce that we will be coming to ARC with a completely new design, a completely new rover, the second generation of Ulu Rover. This is the workshop provided by our university, equipped with everything we need to build, manufacture and test our rover. Our astronaut received technical trainings focused on electric diagnostics, power backup systems and field sorting techniques. The rover is organized into five main departments, electronics, mechanics, science, software and organization. Each team is led by a dedicated coordinator who ensures smooth communication and collaboration within the team. We hold weekly journal meetings and regular department sessions to keep everyone aligned. Our team uses Asana for project planning and task tracking, making sure the lines are made, goals are clear, and responsibilities are shared efficiently. With Asana, we map out each phase of the project from research and prototyping to manufacturing, testing, and presentation. We are proud to introduce our official website where you can follow our progress and learn more about the team. Our website isn't just a display, it's an experience. Here we showcase our high-performance rubber designs, getting edge components like the triple chassis, and a clear look into our journey through advanced drone systems and robotics engineering. This is more than a website. It's a digital reflection of our team's ambition, creativity, and technical power. We are proud of what we've built and even more excited for what's ahead. Our rover features a six-wheel drive rocker boogie suspension system crafted entirely from aluminium. This gives the rover remarkable stability and mobility, allowing it to navigate over rough terrain and obstacles, much like those you would encounter on Mars. We have also designed a six-axis robotical arm capable of operating both a precision gripper and a drill. This allows the rover to interact with its environment, collect soil samples, and perform scientific tasks autonomously, whether it is grasping objects or drilling into the surface to extract geological data our design can do them both. Our movement system is 97 by 105 by 38 centimeters in length and has a weight of around 35 kilograms. The robotic arm we designed for ERC consists of warm gears. It has six axes for more flexible movement. We use steel when making shot and gears to increase the durability and reduce the friction. The other materials we use in robotic arm aluminum and filament uh, as it reduces the weight. Uh, there are Gripper and uh, drill mechanism top of the robotic arm. Uh, we use simple gripper mechanism to take sample uh, on the surface on the Mars, and we use Archimedes mechanism to drill mechanism. The arm, which is 130 centimeters long and extend with a radius of 100 centimeters, the run weight is around 25 kilograms. The biggest advantage of using warm gear is that the system does not slip back. The disadvantage is that it is difficult to manufacture. Hello, I'm electronic captain of the Ulu Rover team and today I'm going to introduce you our electronic system part by part. So let's get started with our block schematics. This is the block diagram of our rover. The central controller is the SDM32F401 microcontroller. It collects data from sensors and sends commands to other units. We use a BME sensor for temperature, humidity and pressure and MPU for orientation and a lot of for weight measurement. Communication is handled through I2C and UR protocols. For advanced tasks like image processing and navigation, we use both a Raspberry Pi 5 and a Jetson Nano. Jetson uses a stereo camera for depth perception. Motor control is handled by STM. It is chosen for its advanced motor control timers. We use custom designed PCBs with L293D drivers for DC motors and for DIV26 8 and drivers for stepper motors. Power is supplied by 6S lipo batteries. For safety, power goes through a fuse and emergency stop system before reaching the power distribution board. We couldn't find any power distribution board that meets our requirements, so as a team, we designed one. Hello, I am designer of this power distribution board and I'm gonna introduce it to you. Our rover needs a lot of power, so we designed a special power distribution board. It gives different voltage for different parts. There are two 5V outputs and one 3.3V output and two battery voltage outputs. The 5V outputs for Raspberry Pi and Jetson Nano, they need a lot of current. We use an XL4015 voltage regulator. It gives up to 5 amp current and it does not last too much energy. It is good for our small computers. We use terminal blocks for power 
and XT60 for the main input. We also use a 25 amp fuse for safety. Let's cut the power if something goes wrong. Hello, in this part I am going to make sure our safety systems. We use an emergency stop button that holds all the power less than one second. Also, to ensure safety power goes through a fuse before reaching power distribution board. Our visual indication system consists of three power LEDs that shows rover's condition. For autonomous navigation, we will be going this year with a hybrid approach. We will be using ROSE 2 with our custom scripts. Autonomous navigation is divided into three parts. Perception, mapping and localization, and motion control. For perception, we will be using Z2 camera as a sensor. The Z2 camera will give its sensor readings as point cloud information to the ORB SLAM 3, in which we will be doing the mapping and localization. The ORB SLAM algorithm will provide key frames, camera trajectory, and map points, which is used by the NAV2 stack in ROS2 to plan safe and efficient paths. For motion control, the rover uses a differential drive system controlled through ROS2 with a custom hardware interface. This converts high level velocity commands into motor commands. Image classification is divided into three different stages the capturing, segmentation, and classification. For segmentation, we use the unit slash scanning algorithm. For classification, we use an efficient innate B2 algorithm. And for capturing, we use the onboard webcam on the rover. In a test of 30 random isolated images, we are able to get an accuracy of 0 0.8. In the Grand Station Rover, we use the light beam one to the as main communication system, which supports communication uh, up to 5 kilometers. It's uh, 5.8 GHz bands. Additionally, we used uh, a telemetry radio as a backup solution in case the main communication system fails. We enabled teleoperation from ground based using both keyboard and joystick control. The goal of the Ulu Rover Science Team is to provide a solid foundational scientific hypothesis to serve as the basis for the rover's activities and design. And this year's new and improved science payload consists of a Raspberry Pi 5 controlled automated mini lab to conduct both sampling and testing on board the rover to minimize the effects of environmental contamination. The physical sampling system consists of a 3D printed PLA drilling mechanism capable of reaching depths of up to 30 centimeters. The onboard mini lab processes up to three soil samples and one rock sample, keeping them protected from the environment. Soil samples are split for separate tests. Some are mixed with water for analysis, while others go through gas testing. A rotating drum removes samples past a camera for imaging, and a weight sensor tracks the soil changes. All liquids are handled by peristaltic pumps. Our hypothesis centers on the past or present existence of sulfur-reducing microorganisms on Mars. To investigate, we assess habitability using data from our onboard weather station, measuring atmospheric gases like hyd hydrogen and methane, UV levels and temperature. Each soil sample is tested for pH, sulfate and iron ions, which are key to microbial metabolism. One of our core experiments uses hydrogen peroxide to react with soil compounds, producing gases like carbon dioxide if life-related organic molecules are present. This gas evolution is measured with onboard sensors and serves as a preliminary life detection test. Complementing this, we've developed an in-house rock identification model using PyTorch. Trained on a curated dataset of region-specific rock types, it runs through a shiny-based interface and helps us identify rocks that could reveal more about the site's geologic and potentially biological history. 